Hello, welcome to the new series, Aspects of Archaeology. Uh, in this series we're going to be visiting various aspects of the archaeological world and re maybe even revisiting a couple from the A to Z of archaeology. Uh, essentially, this is um, hopefully going to be a worthy successor to that um, fairly popular series and um, also, rather excitingly, um, in this uh, a particular series, we're going to be getting out and about a bit more, uh, rather than just being in front of this wonderful collection of books. So uh, watch this space. Um, I'm very excited about where uh, aspects may, may be going, and um, hopefully you'll stick with me for the ride. So uh, today, um, I am following up on the promise that I made in the Z of A to Z, where I said that there would be a more substantial Z or Z uh, coming in aspects. And uh, what I've chosen to do actually is to look at zoo archaeology or archaeozoology. And uh, this essentially is a very important part of archaeology. Human beings and animals have always lived in close proximity. And with the advent of farming, this relationship became even more nuanced and complicated. Archaeozoology concerns itself with this relationship between human beings and their animal cousins. Archaeozoology studies some of our closest relationships, such as between dogs and human beings, and also some of our more barbaric, such as between big cats and gladiatorial combat. Archaeozoology also looks at the way in which we use animals. This is a mammoth bone hut from Mesorique and also the way in which different parts of animals can be used to make tools, such as bone and antler harpoons, or even antler combs, for getting rid of nits in the Viking Age. Archaeozoology studies everything from insects to elephants, so long as they have a relationship with people. And for the most part, archaeozoologists deal with the bones of these animals. And to this end, most archaeozoologists are extremely skilled at identifying animals, no matter how small or meagre the remains. So, the study of the relationship between human beings and animals in the past not only helps us uh, to populate that world with, with other creatures, but also um, aids a richer understanding of our lives through time. One of the more obvious applications of animal remains in archaeology is in identifying human diets. For example, red deer bones with butchery marks upon them indicates that they are hunting and eating red deer. Also, large collections of young cattle bones indicates that a dairy herd is being maintained, where the milk is supposed to go to people. And the presence of certain insects, such as grain weevils, indicates the presence of grain, wheat, and potentially even bread and other baked goods. If the bones of a certain bird are found on the site, such as the gracile bones of a certain goose, we can infer that this site was in use at times when these geese were flying overhead, migrating. Indeed, the presence of all of these creatures can indicate the seasonality of a site, due to the different times when they mature throughout the year, and therefore the different times when they're able to be used. The broad environmental context of human lives can be inferred and studied by looking at other animals, Snails and mollusks, for example, are extremely sensitive to environmental conditions. If one finds a certain type of oyster, it's very easy to infer what the water quality was like. And other mollusks live in such specific conditions, we can tell they lived indoors and only a certain distance from a fire. In some cases, the biography of an animal may be revealed through its remains. This is very helpful, as obviously they don't speak or write. A horse may be uncovered, for example, and by its remains, it may be very obvious that it was well looked after, it has good teeth, and it was groomed and cared for all its life. However, marks upon this skull may indicate at some point it was mounted upon a stick. This indicates that this prized animal had died and then been used on a nid or cursing stick in the Viking period. One of the most crucial applications of archaeozoology has been the study of the domestication of animals, the way in which human beings bring animals closer to themselves and essentially create a symbiotic relationship. Archaeozoology has recently confirmed that there was an earlier than previously thought date for the domestication of dogs. Rather than being domesticated in the Mesolithic, it is now known that there was an early proto-domestication during the Upper Paleolithic. The rise of farming and the ways that animals became folded into a farming lifestyle has long been a subject of study for archaeologists. 
Often these animals show very particular changes, for example pigs. When domesticated, pigs' teeth become smaller and fewer in number. They also lose their shaggy and rough appearance, and often their aggressive disposition. They become more docile and tame than their feral forebears. An astonishing change is observable with cattle as well. From the mighty aurochs, powerful and extremely aggressive, cattle have shrunk bit by bit to become the more docile versions of cows that we know today. Essentially, they've become more useful in the human setting, and this is all just through domestication. By observing and analysing these changes in animals, archaeozoology is able to infer the way in which farming was spread or adopted by different groups, and all of this simply by studying the remains of animals found in archaeological sites. The study of human beings in the past, by definition, has to be a study of the world in which they were living. And animals have always played a part and a role in our lives, uh, be it um, actively trying to eat us, <laughs> um, be it uh, being eaten or being used in some way by people, or even just having a relationship which is more abstract, be it uh, fighting in an arena or, uh, or simply having a pet. Animals, um, by, uh, by definition, are part of our world and therefore are part and have always been part of our lives. Um, so if archaeology wants to gain uh, a proper understanding of the way that people lived in the past, um, the study of animals um, not only is vital, but also is extremely useful. So that's been the inaugural aspects of archaeology, archaeozoology. And um, long may the series continue. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any comments, feel free to comment below. Or alternatively, please do feel free to send me a message or a question and I shall get back to you post-haste. Um, naturally, please do subscribe to the channel. All you need to do is just push the uh, subscribe button above there. Uh, or, if you want, um, please uh, feel free to follow us on Facebook. All you need to do is search for Archeo Soup Productions and click like. And often, uh, news stories, for example, that don't make it onto the channel get plonked onto the Facebook page instead. So, um, until next time, thank you very much.